time now is 19 minutes to 8, and it's time to look at the day's papers. Crash Bang Woolies is the Sun's headline as it lists a day of disasters for Labour. Crash as Jeremy Corbyn's car ran over a cameraman's foot. Bang as the Unite leader Len McCluskey fell down some steps and Woolies because, oh, so says the Sun, the manifesto launch is now a shambles. The Daily Mail agrees that it was a day of calamity. The Eye talks of a day of drama, whilst the Telegraph comments it was a day that sent a new benchmark for incompetence. The Guardian claims that each faction of the Labour Party is blaming the other for an embarrassing leak of the draft manifesto. It reveals that an inquiry will be held into how it happened, but it won't report until after the general election to avoid more further souring the atmosphere in the party. The Financial Times says that despite being wrong-footed by the leak, Labour was keen to put a brave face on it, quickly signed off the document. The Mirror argues that the unexpected upside of the leak is that it gives voters more time to digest the party's popular policies. And on the front page of the Mirror, Dear PM, you're destroying nursing, is the headline. The paper prints a letter to Theresa May, calling on her to end the 1% cap on wage rises. The letter, signed by more than 100 nurses, asks why some colleagues have to turn to food banks or ask for hardship grants just to make ends meet. The Guardian reports that Mrs May came under fire during a radio phone-in about the NHS. A paediatrician told the Prime Minister she was considering quitting after 12 years because things had got so bad on the shop floor. Mrs May said the Conservatives had responded to a request from the NHS for more money. And the Times picks up on research by Pulse magazine which suggests that one in eight family doctor posts is now vacant after a six-fold rise in recent years. The Telegraph thinks the vacancies will mean waiting times to see a doctor will climb even higher. The Guardian says there's also been an increase in the average time it takes to recruit a partner in a GP surgery and the Mail says some surgeries are being, have been given up trying to recruit more GPs and they're hiring pharmacists or therapists instead. And it is NHS England says the miniature survey of 800 160 GPs does not give an accurate national picture. Time now is 17 minutes to 8. I am not a pacifist. Pacifist, I'm sorry. I'm not a pacifist, Jeremy Corbyn will declare today in a speech designed to counter Tory claims that he's not fit to be put in control of the nation's security. The Labour leader says that he does accept that military action under international law and as a genuine last resort is in some circumstances necessary. Now, we hope to be speaking to Mr Corbyn next week, but in the meantime, the Labour Party have chosen the Shadow Minister for International Trade, Barry Gardner, to talk about his speech. Good morning to you, Mr Gardner. Good morning. Bit of a puzzle, isn't it, that the Defence spokesman is not available to talk to? Perhaps because she insists that she is in favour of Trident and Mr Corbyn is not in favour of Trident. Well, Nick, let's let's get, uh, <laughs> rather than focused on the personalities, let's get on to the issues. Well, just a I'm, brief one on the personalities. Well, you are the Shadow Minister for International Trade, is a legitimate question. Yes, indeed, and I'm a member of the Shadow Cabinet as well. So, um, yeah, there there we are. On to now, the substance, then. Yes, on to the substance. I, I mean, I, I did think your your earlier report was beneath you, this crash bang wallop <laughs> stuff. You know, that um, was quoting the song yeah, in no, a paper I know, I know it was, I know it was. But actually, you know, this is the Today programme, and people expect to a standard and a quality of debate um, that is higher than crash bang wallop. They even, they even expect if you us are to read out people. newspaper headlines, which we do every morning and have done for many, many years, the, without backing and them, endorsing you, them, or and, criticizing and them. they expect you to actually exercise a, a degree of choice okay, and, and, let's and get discretion. Back to the yeah, you wanted to do that. On we go. Yeah, look, um, I'm really pleased that we could have a prime minister who is reluctant and thinks carefully before putting our service men and women in harm's way, who won't simply, you know, jump to the, the tune at uh, the moment that uh, a US president snaps their fingers and says, come and join me in a bombing raid. Um, I want a Prime Minister who believes in working collaboratively through the United Nations to resolve international conflicts, uh, and everything that we know about Jeremy Corbyn and everything we know about the way in which the Labour Party is framing its defence policy in the manifesto suggests that that is the approach that we would adopt and that he would adopt. OK, now and, he says in I his speech, let me just ask you about something he says in the speech. He says that it's not true that he wouldn't use military action under any circumstances. Can you think of any circumstances that Jeremy Corbyn would use military action? And indeed, has he ever backed it? 
Well, look, uh, of course I can think of circumstances in, in which he would use military action. Can he? Yes, of course. When he couldn't. When he was in the Labour Party uh, leadership hostings, let me just quote well, him you are, to you. you well, let you me see, quote you him to you. Question. You ask a question, then you want to answer No, I don't. I want well, to give you Jeremy Corbyn's well, words, and no, I want you, you to expand You ask them. me if I could think of a scenario well, or, in uh, which Jeremy Corbyn would sanction military action. Okay. I said I could, and you immediately jumped in and told me what you were going to answer to that question. No, I really so didn't. Now, but on you go. Well, you did, actually, because you said, well, let me tell you what Jeremy Corbyn said. So, look, the point is this. He is absolutely committed to the security of this country. If so this, the if, this, if this country were under military threat, if this country were uh, at risk of um, uh, being... Uh, attacked by another nation, of course, uh, as Prime Minister and of course a Labour cabinet uh, would be wanting to ensure our security. But much okay, more Mr. important... Gardner, let me just important. remind you of what he said. These are his words, not mine. When asked in the Labour Party hustings in 2015, that precise question, are there any circumstances in which he would deploy military force? Any, replied Mr Corbyn. I'm sure there are some. I can't think of any at the moment. His words. Well, yes, and he said, I'm sure there are some. Okay. But he said he couldn't think of any. Let's move on to a real uh, example. Then this you is, can talk about Nick, it. this is really, really, you know, picking up sort of um, points <laughs> like that. Uh, I, I do think you are trivialising the debate. Let's focus on the really important stuff, which is about the the need for conflict prevention in sure. this world. Let's the do need that. for conflict resolution in this world. Sure. The role that diplomacy has to play in reducing the tensions that we see. We are in a situation situation in the world at the moment, in which we, we see sanctions against Russia, we see tension increasing with Russia, we've got a completely unstable situation in Syria and the Middle East, we've got a refugee crisis around the world, and you want to focus on, on, on a throw-away remark in a, in a leadership no. hustings two years ago. Well, if you let let's, me, I'll ask you about a real example well, that you let's, care yeah, let's do about. It. It's the Absolutely. Kosovo War. Uh, in the Kosovo War, which is an example of using military action, you signed a, 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 an early day motion, very important motion in the House of Commons, in which you said it was vital to deal with what you called genocide. Mr Corbyn signed a motion at exactly the same time, condemning what he called fraudulent justifications for intervening in a genocide. I put it to you that you are not a pacifist, but everything about Mr Corbyn's behaviour suggests if he's not a pacifist, he has opposed every military action ever taken in this country since the Second World War. Well, look, Let's let's focus on uh, the issues of uh, genocide and human rights, and let's look at the record because you want to take this down to personalities and not the the policy of the party, not the wider approach that, that we have as a party. Let's talk about that. In Parliament, I think you would admit, Nick, that there is nobody in Parliament who has a stronger record in speaking out against human rights abuse, genocide and war crimes over that 30-year period than Jeremy Corbyn Indeed. himself. Just one and, more sentence, if you would, Mr Gardner, because we're short of time. Well, uh, and <laughs> that that must be done when we do take military intervention to stop war crimes like that. It should be done in collaboration with and in full support of the United United Nations. So it's done in that uni not unilateral way, but in a multilateral way, respecting the rule of law. Thank you for spelling that out, Barry Gardner. It is ten to eight now. Time for thought for the day. And with us this morning is.